Uh, hello, my name is Kevin and I am part of the FIU Masters Program in Management Information System Cohort 25. Uh, this presentation, this video is part of the Information Security class headed by Dr. Faisal Kaleem and Dr. Manuel Oliveira. Before we move any further into this presentation, I have to issue the disclaimer which is that any information uh, in this video is for educational purposes only and uh, not to be used with any malicious intent. So I shall not be responsible for anyone getting caught and sodomized in jail. Okay, moving on to the nature of the presentation, we want to talk about the man in the middle attack and specifically focusing on ARP spoofing and SSL stripping. So what is the man in the middle attack? It's essentially it's an interception as you can see here uh, originally the connection is between the victim and server directly um, what we aim to do is get in the middle of that connection and how exactly does it do that? Well it intercepts the traffic between the victim computer and the uh, gateway for that particular network and then uh, the attacker must be on the same network as the victim obviously and then w we will use the, um, the ARP spoofing to let the victim think that our attacking computer is actually the gateway and we will let the gateway think that our attacking computer is actually the victim. Uh, we will be using uh, these, what they say as the Swiss Army Knife of Security Professionals Backtrack 5 to perform this attack and we will be using something called SSL Strip. This is just a little bit of details about SSL Strip, website thoughtcrime.org. Essentially how it works intercepts all web traffic and strips any SSL traffic it encounters. Um, victim communicates with an attacker with the attacker over regular HTTP and the attacking box communicates with the server over regular SSL. Server does not know the difference. Why is this important? Well this is important because a lot of secure communications are done over SSL, secure sockets layer. Just a little, another il illustration here as to exactly how SSL strip works. It will watch as HTTP traffic goes by any references, any links to HTTPS, it switches it out and keeps a, a map of, of links that it switches out and uh, sends that to the victim computer and so the victim communicates in uh, HTTP. Uh, the reason I, I chose this particular attack it's be, it, is that it, it it doesn't have as much physical interference required. Uh, it doesn't require uh, any phishing of any kind. Uh, basically, you execute this attack on the uh, network with your desired victim, and they would be none the wiser to an attack actually happening. Uh, we will actually demonstrate how this would work. Uh, all the victim really has to be doing is just just browsing the internet as normal, or just log into their particular um, you know websites, whether it be banking, email, or Facebook, and we would be able to intercept that traffic, uh, retrieve the passwords, hopefully in this demonstration, and all without their knowing, all without them actually experiencing any um, delays or denials of service or anything like that, you know. So should be or the, the victim should be oblivious to what would be happening to them and, that, and that's why I chose this particular attack so without further ado let us move into the demonstration and portion of this video okay so we have backtrack 5 up and running here and in this particular setup I have it running as a virtual machine and um, it's running on my uh, my Windows host so in this demonstration the backtrack 5 uh, virtual machine will be the attacking machine and the victim machine will be the host the virtual machine host which is my Windows 7 machine as I said before uh, these two machines need to be on the on same uh, network so uh, what I did is um, in in my setup of VMware and my setup of this particular virtual machine I had the network adapter set to bridge mode so it will actually share the same physical connection but appear as two computers to my uh, my my gateway my, my home gateway here so as you can see the uh, internet address here is uh, 1.82 and if we will run an IP config on our host which is our victim 
you'll see 1.70 1.254 is the uh, gateway uh, this tells me that therefore these two computers are on the uh, same network so now that we have that set uh, first step that we want to do is uh, set up a route in the uh, IP tables and this route is going to is going to take any traffic traveling on port 80 and redirect to a, a port of our choosing and this port of our choosing will be the port that SSL strip is listening on purpose of this is to have um, any and all traffic uh, go to SSL strip so that SSL strip can do its uh, do its thing and we can then analyze the, the information and data so I have the command uh, here in my little uh, notepad from my previous trials and then I don't like typing that much so you know the process is a pretty long command so I just copy and paste it it's easier you don't want to see a video of me typing anyway so IP tables table NAT pre-routing that protocol TCP destination port 80 which is web traffic we're going to send that to port 10,000 that's the port that I want to send it to that's SSL strip default port so once you have that there and then if you want to view it you're in IP tables uh, the list table NAT and you can see that the um, the routing rule is set up here so now we have that set up um, next thing we want to do is run SSL strip so uh, there's two ways we could do that I can just type it in the uh, command line here but you know to find it uh, applications backtrack information gathering network analysis and then SSL analysis SSL strip will uh, open up uh, another terminal here which will show you uh, some of the command line arguments that you could use with SSL strip I particularly like the uh, K which will kill all the uh, sessions in progress or any SSL sessions in progress uh, it will kill it and then the favicon uh, dash F I like that one as well because it actually uh, puts a little padlock as the favicon so um, to the unsuspecting victim it probably would even seem like an SSL page but it actually won't so we're just gonna run SSL strip you can tell it to listen on port 10,000 and that's up and running so we have SSL strip up and running we have our IP table telling it to route to uh, to, to, to port 10,000 as well any any traffic on port 80 routed to 10,000 so that was the difficult part the other part now is to actually run uh, the man in the middle attack and to sniff some packets so to do this I will use a program called Etacap which I like because it comes with a nice graphical user interface specified with the uh, uh, capital G command line argument and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, almost like a Swiss army knife of sniffers really and uh, it automatically sets adapters into promiscuous mode if I so define it uh, we're going to do sniff and then uh, unified sniffing and the interface is going to be Ethernet 0 and from here we're going to do just this uh, scan for host now this is particularly um, helpful if you don't know the IP address for the uh, host that you want to attack a lot of times it's you know you might be able to know it uh, offhand in this case we do uh, but sometimes it's 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 better to um, to just do a scan and then bring up the uh, host list and then you see all the IPs here that are part of this network there's another interesting to look at if you do view and resolve IP addresses uh, what this will actually do is resolve the IP addresses to, to, to their names or descriptions so wh what I will actually achieve is us uh, being able to gain some useful information especially on a network that we are unfamiliar with uh, sometimes you want to attack somebody or you, you, know, you want to pick a, a victim uh, your description might be helpful sometimes uh, by default you know people name their laptops like you know Kevin's uh, laptop or Kevin's PC or something like that so that will actually show up here so you have a better idea um, uh, who you are attacking instead of memorizing IP addresses and whatnot um, and so this is uh, we're using Etacap to do to, to do this so we're gonna uh, do the um, we're going to add it to target one, the victim, which is uh, um, conveniently identified here. And then we are going to use the uh, gateway 
as target 2 and we're just gonna view the uh, current target so you see 70 and 254 and then we're gonna do the man in the middle attack uh, this is where uh, we this is how SSL strip is gonna do do its thing because we have to actually direct traffic to it so we're gonna do ARP poisoning as the man in the middle attack so this is, we'll just click and then we see, say yes sniff remote connections uh, we don't just want to do it one way we want to do it two ways so we leave that unchecked and we hit OK. Once that done, you see ARP poisoning victims. Yes, the victims are being poisoned. And then we're going to start sniffing. And that's it. Our backtrack machine is now, uh, our attacking machine, is now um, looking at, at, at SSL connections, uh, web traffic, and stripping it of SSL connections. And um, we're just waiting for something to happen now. So let's go over to our target machine, our, our victim. And let's open up a web browser. And in this web browser, let's, let's uh, go to google.com. So as you see, it goes to the uh, to the internet. It's fine. So let's uh, let's go to hotmail.com. Let's check check some email. All right. So. I uh, have a email account here. So let's log in. So this is a victim. Victim is just logging in as usual. There's nothing. The page comes up as usual. There's you know nothing suspicious going on here, and I didn't have to do any configuration changes or anything like that. Um, and go back to our backtrack machine and let's look at what Etika picked up. And so it picked up the username and password. And you can see login on live.com. So you tell live, okay, yes, person is, is logging into Hotmail. It's, it's a Microsoft account. Okay, all right. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we can do with this. All right, let's go to uh, Facebook. All right, good old Facebook. And uh, let's go in here. Oh, I don't want to memorize that password. And yeah, Facebook is up and running, and I can look at my news feed and all that. You know, so the website is functional, as it normally would be. I have no, I have no friends there, so you know, nothing is coming up. But let's look at what's happening here. You see, again, SSL strip stripped the traffic, and Etika picked up the uh, the post. And now you see uh, the username and password and Facebook.com. So there you have it. That's that's how you um, you use SSL strip to strip the uh, particular uh, secure connections and uh, to sniff out the uh, passwords. The reason I like this particular attack is is that uh, it, it's unknown to the victim. Victim does not know that this is happening to them. Uh, the victim just uh, is browsing the web as normal. As you can see, the internet is running perfectly fine, and um, but we we are actually sniffing the uh, connection. We are actually spoofing the 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 HTTPS connection. Um, so therefore, in conclusion, one of the things uh, that I, I want to point out is how do you defend yourself against uh, such attacks? Uh, as you can as you can see, you know it was very easy for me to pick out IP addresses. You know it's very easy for anyone sitting in a in a, a Starbucks somewhere to. Um, to, to run such an attack and spoof addresses and the answers and, and you know someone may be oblivious to it. So how do you prevent or how do you spot such uh, man in the middle attacks uh, aside from doing uh, you know ARP dash A in the uh, command line to look up to see if you're being spoofed or whatever the case is. Um, well one of the things is I, I want you to, to, to make special note here is that you will see here it's just www.facebook.com. If I were to go to Hotmail, you see it's just login.live.com, and I hope I I think Gmail might the connection was reset. And this is the thing: SSL strip is actually hit or miss when it comes to to, to Gmail. I don't know why, but it works with uh, with everything else. But this is what I want to to, to make note of uh, actually the HTTPS so 
I'm going to shut down the uh, backtrack machine so it's no longer spoofing anything so it's, it's we're, we're no longer sniffing any passwords or anything like that um, and I want uh, want you guys to look at what what the difference is so man in the middle attack has stopped alright so, and then um, we're gonna just stop our SSL strip here so we're no longer the man in the middle everything should be fine so we're just gonna open up a browser again in, um, in our host in our victim machine uh, google.com as you can see even though I stopped the attack it, it still goes to the uh, internet just fine uh, let's go back to our facebook.com uh, actually bad example hotmail.com this is what uh, you should be wary of now you see as before it didn't have this and uh, this is the uh, Microsoft certificate of authenticity and then you see it's HTTPS so this is how you know that this connection at this point is is secure. The connection is is not being spoofed. Uh, the idea behind SSL strip was that um, you know it, it didn't make sense to to break the encryption, but you could go around it, which is what we did with SSL strip. Okay. So, in conclusion, be wary of sites that you visit on public Wi-Fi. If it's possible, try to avoid conducting sensitive transactions such as, ba such as banking transactions on public networks. Look for the HTTPS and or the certificate in the address bar. So tell you if the connection is being spoofed or not. Another way to also indicate if the connection is under attack or if it's being spoofed is that you will get a prompt for a certificate that the browser does not know usually for a site that the certificate should be known for for example you go to chase.com and you get a prompt for a certificate that probably is an indication that your connection is being spoofed and you would probably want to stay away from that uh, the information in this video is not just limited to laptops it is also applicable to mobile devices so that is also something that you want to pay attention to as stated before, information in this video is for educational purposes. And finally, I want to thank you for watching. Have a good day.